This on camera monitor is worth purchasing because of this false color too, which I have never seen before except for this small HD focus monitor, which was my first one. So let's check this OCT5 Plus monitor. Let's go. So guys, this false color tool allows you to look at your image, at false color image, and at a glance understand which part is underexposed, it's like kind of purple-ish, and which part is overexposed, it is red. And the skin has to be green, so let me show you. I just rotate the ND filter, here is the over, uh, I mean underexposed image, and here is the overexposed image, as you can see right here. And let me turn my skin green. So here it is. It is slightly, slightly overexposed, but if you shoot in S Log 3, it is the best way to shoot S Log 3 to a bit overexpose and then to bring down the exposure to get perfectly keen, uh, not keen, clean image and not noisy image. So this false color tool is much better than gradients of gray and in different false color tools like every false color tool. I don't like it, I don't understand it at a first glance, but this one is great. I got used to it with small HD focus and it's super convenient to use. And by the way, this OC monitor is also really cheap. It's $145, it's not touch screen, so you only control it with a joystick. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> you only control it with the joystick and I'm not going to uh, record this video here anymore. Of course, guys, I had to move to the forest because my neighbors are doing some construction works very loudly. So this monitor is not a touchscreen monitor, but it does have a joystick, so you won't leave fingerprints all over the monitor while you're using it, but you do have a lot of controls with the joystick, which is okay to me because if I were wearing gloves or something, if it's cold outside, I can easily control the monitor without, uh, you know, problems with the touchscreen, which is great. I know guys about the kit, in the kit you'll find this plastic uh, monitor hood which allows you to monitor your image uh, in direct sunlight, so it's really nice, it has some rubber bands and it attaches via those bands to the monitor itself, it's pretty convenient and nice to have in this kit because this monitor is 1000 nits, but it seems like it's not that bright as a 1000 nit monitor, it's closer to 800 nits I think. And also in the kit you'll find two cables, HDMI to micro, micro HDMI and HDMI to mini HDMI, which is nice to have in the kit. Also you'll find the bracket and the monitor itself has only one HDMI in, so no HDMI out, as you might have guessed, because it's a cheaper monitor, cheaper option. But still you do have an ability to monitor your image on 5 inch uh, monitor and it's a full HD panel and you can really tell if you are in focus, you can tell about the composition, and it's also super lightweight, which is great. One more interesting feature is the working spaces. So as you can see right here, if I toggle between my working spaces, I have different things like grids, like false color, and etc. And if you press in, you can work with those as well. I'll show you in a minute how it works, so let's get into it. And the battery life, guys, with 5200 mAh NPF battery is more than 6 hours at maximum brightness, which is great, because you can uh, power this monitor with a small battery for a very long time, and you can also power it with Canon batteries, if I'm not mistaken, Canon LP batteries. If I'm wrong, please let me know down in the comment section below how they are named. And all you know, it's a super convenient uh, monitor, because my Atomos Ninja 5, when I had this monitor, it was true in batteries tune through batteries like crazy. And also guys, I have reviewed another OC monitor, Lilmon 5, the link is right here and in the description below, if you're interested in that one, because it's a touchscreen monitor, also 1000 nits, and also with the same working spaces kind of structure, so if you're interested, watch this one. Okay guys, so here it is, the software of this monitor, if you swipe between your working spaces, you can see that you can adjust it uh, by adding a new tool. So if you add the new tool, we have a lot of uh, things for framing like aspect ratio, center, cross hatch, and uh, all that, and amorphic disk squeeze and different flavors. Also here we have the exposure tools and it's starting to rain, guys. <laughs> also the focus assist like peaking and um, basically peaking and uh, um, extra contrast, let me say. You can upload your user a lot. You have multiscopes, audio meters, and all that. So if you flick between the working spaces, here it is the first one and different tools for this one, but I prefer to leave it with the false color too. As you remember, if we change the exposure, 
it changes the false color and you can see the IRE values right here. Also, if you flick to the next one, you can see that right here we have different aspect ratios, cross hatch, anamorphic D squeeze, multi scope waveform, and different uh, style of things. It's also customizable. So, a lot of different things to customize. You can adjust the density, the transparency, you can make it bigger or put it to the bottom and all that. So, every effect, every tool is customizable. And if you push and hold to the left, you can uh, enter the main menu. The main menu lets you adjust the volume, uh, display rotate settings, also display status settings, um, different input values, color management, uploading user lots, and all that. So if you don't need it, you just swipe to the right. If you swipe, uh, not swipe, you press to the bottom, you can adjust the brightness. So here is the brightness levels. Here is at zero, and here it is at 10. Also, if you press it, uh, upwards you can enter the magnification tool and if you press in you can adjust the position of this tool press in again back back here it is so super convenient super nice and easy to use here we have a little cold shoe right there uh, pretty nice frame also <laughs> from small HD it's inspired by small HD I'm sure and also here on the bottom you can see the quarter 20 uh, let me adjust the exposure for a second here it is, the quarter 20, the SD card for your LUTs, the remote control, the headphone jack. Uh, on the top we don't have anything, but here it is on the back. So on the back we have a turn on and off switch, which is nice, so you won't accidentally switch it on or off. Here is the place for Canon batteries, here is the MPF battery. Also here you can see the battery out port, which allows you to provide power from this battery to another devices, HDMI in. And here are the places to hold the straps from this Hun hood. So super simple, super convenient. We also have a USB-C port, but it's mostly for firmware updates, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure if you can power this monitor with the USB. Yes, guys, this USB-C port does have a DC in 5 to 17 volts, so you can actually power this monitor with a power bank. And all no, guys, super simple, super affordable monitor, and I like this a lot because of its lightweight construction and easy to use interface. So you basically adjust all of the settings once, you toggle your favorite ones, and you simply flick between uh, different working spaces. And you can even add a new one. You can have more working spaces if you want to. Thank you so much for watching guys if you have any questions please leave them down below i will address every comment and if you did enjoy this video please smash the like and subscribe buttons and the notifications bell see you in the next video guys take care bye